Hello, everyone. Happy Saturday. Hi, everyone. Hi, and welcome to the VagCast, a weekly podcast in which we, the Vagilantes, Katie, Maggie, and Vaishnavi discuss sexual health policy topics. I'm Katie. I'm Vaishnavi. Um, yeah, Vaishnavi, do you want to introduce this week's episode? Yeah, sure. So this week we're, uh, we are unfortunately lagging, lacking Maggie, um, but we're going to be talking about birth control. Yay! Um, and in, in all its various forms. So there are so many different forms of birth control, and it can be so confusing. So we hope to give you a commentary on the different forms of birth control. Yeah, let's do it. You want to take it away? Oh, sure. Um, so there's two main forms of birth control, um, hormonal and um, non-hormonal methods. The barrier um, method? Yeah, barrier yeah. Uh, barrier methods. Some people would say abstinence is a form of birth control, mm. which, like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, <I> kind guess. of? <laughs> kind of. Like, yeah. Um, but, but so there's so many different types. So we can go from, from hormonal um, to barrier methods to, like, behavioral methods of birth control. Um, mm-hmm. And there's so many types, right? So first, we're going to start out with um, hormonal, if that's okay. Let's do it. I'm excited. Yeah. So what kind of um, hormonal birth control methods do, do you know of, Katie? Okay. So I know of um, the pill, of course. Um, so And also, uh, I've heard of the coil, the copper coil, um, mm-hmm. IUD, intrauterine device. Uh, do you have any more? Because I'm still thinking of some. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So the pill, um, the patch. Um, mm-hmm. The implant, um, yeah. the the depot shot. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Is that Nexplanon? Um, yes, Nexplanon. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so all these, most of these hormonal methods work by making your body think you're pregnant. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, so birth control pills are are used on a schedule. So, yeah. So you often have to take. Uh, take it at the exact same time every single day um, and skip a few days, um, which is why you have sugar pills in the birth control pill case. So birth control, control pills come in a case mm-hmm. um, that is, is labeled like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like the pill you have to take every day at a certain time. Um, right. And, and so it, it, uh, you take one every single day. And so it stops firm. From, from joining with an egg. Uh, mm-hmm. This is a process called fertilization, and that's what, uh, you know, the point of most, if not all, birth control is, um, is to stop fertilization. Right. So so, horm- so um, the pill actually stops ovulation, um, which means there's, there's no eggs for your body, like, which means there's no eggs for the sperm to fertilize. Um, because your body already thinks it's pregnant um, because you're pumping progesterone into your body. Mm-hmm. And that makes you think you're pregnant. Right. Um, and so you don't ovulate anymore. And so there's nothing for the sperm to fertilize. So that that's how it prevents uh, fertilization. That's interesting. Yeah. That's a super control. fun fact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Birth control, like the pill, also has a very interesting history. Um, and it really calls into question medical ethics and you know, how we value life and things like that, because it was tested on people who were less fortunate. Mm-hmm. Um, but now it's, it's a very, it's like a crucial uh, is- issue for women's rights and, and freedom for those people who can get pregnant, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That's really yeah. interesting. Um, yeah. What so, are, sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to move on to the next method of birth control. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask, what's uh, another hormonal method of birth control? <laughs> that And, yeah. like, what are the advantages and disadvantages of using, say, the pill over something like an IUD? Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. So so I'll, I'll answer the hormonal question first um, because it's kind of in the same vein of what I'm talking about. So the second one is the birth control patch. Um, and so the patch is just a transdermal contraceptive, uh, which sounds really fancy, but you just like basically put it on your arm, um, or, or like anywhere, you know, you can, but it's usually your arm. Um, and so it, it prevents pregnancy, um, by containing the hormones estrogen and, and progestin. And it, it just keeps, um, pumping those hormones into your skin, transderm, like into your body transdermally, which mm-hmm. is through the skin. Um, and so it, it also stops your, your uh, ovaries from ovulating. 
so there's there's no nothing for the sperm to fertilize, and also it thickens the cervical mucus. Um, means, yeah, which means it's and that's what most progesterone based um, birth controls do. But that means it's harder for sperm to swim through the the vagina, through the cervix, even up into the reproductive tract. Um, most people don't think this, but but sperm are actually considered invaders to your body. Um, so your your body really doesn't want sperm in there because they're considered like foreign entities and like pathogens. And so it's actually very treacherous for sperm to go through the vagina, go through the cervix, through the uterus, up to the fallopian tubes to fertilize, right? That's really interesting. So is there like an amino response to sperm or is it mostly like a separate a separate system? Um Mm, I'm trying to think about that. Uh, I think there might be an immune response to sperm, but it's not like red blood cell, white blood cell. Right. Yeah, yeah I know what you're not, saying. It's not like killer T cells or B cells um, because they're not like actively wreaking havoc on the system. Like they're not making you sick. You know? Right. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the vagina is naturally very acidic. It actually has the same pH as orange juice. Um, That's cool. That's crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. So it actually has the same pH as orange juice, and sperm are slightly basic. So there is a slight reactive response there. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. So, so the patch, um, sorry, back on the topic, the patch uh, is used every week. It's used weekly. Um, and so you replace it uh, once a week, and mm-hmm. wor- ver- whereas the pill you take uh, daily. Um, so it might be more beneficial for people who are busier or something like that. Um, and then the, the third, um, oh, actually there's a few more. The, the third, um, hormonal birth control is, um, is called the birth control shot. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's basically, it's, it's referred to as the depot shot. Right. And it's, um, it's just a horm- it contains a hormone progestin, um, that also stops ovulation. So again, thinks your body like makes your body think you're pregnant um, and also makes the cervical mucus thicker. Uh, and it's basically just um, uh, a shot that the doctor gives you into your, your body. Um, and it stays for 12 to 13 weeks. And then, so that's three months and then you go get another shot. Gotcha. Yeah. And so the last one is um, the birth control implant. Uh, this can be kind of expensive, but it lasts up to five years and it's basically like the shot, um, so that's what, that's what you're saying. It's called Nexplanon. Yeah. So it's basically like a shot, the pill, the patch, um, and it just releases hormones into your body to stop you from getting pregnant. Um, they use the hormone progestin. Um, and, and so, so yeah, it prevents fertilization, increases cervical mucus and all that good stuff. Um, but it lasts five years and you don't really have to think about it. So yeah. Nexplanon is like the implant, not the shot. Yes. Yeah. So Depovera is the birth control shot. Uh, next okay. one on is the birth control implant. And it's usually, so the, the shot and the implant are usually in your arm. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, can I ask one quick follow-up question? Yeah. So how many of these methods are covered by health insurance or how expensive are they? Oh, yeah. So that varies. That varies. Um, some are covered by insurance. So birth control pills are often um, covered by insurance. But, but, you know, we have like the new legislation coming out nowadays right starting to threaten um people's rights to choose and people's rights to health and and it's it's kind of scary um but so if you want the birth control pill there are some companies that do it um cheaply and will send it to you like as a monthly subscription so two of these that i know of are called pill club and NERX, um and you and you are x um, and they send birth control pills for, I think, under $5 a month or a little over, a little under around that price range. But so I will tell you the price ranges. Um, the birth control pill uh, can cost a maximum of $50. Um, so it's ranging from 0 to 50 um, and it's usually a month's supply. Got it. Okay. And the birth control patch is from 0 to $150. Mm-hmm. Uh, the shot is from zero to a hundred dollars. That's once every three months. Mm-hmm. Um, the patch is once every week. Um, Got it. The the implant is zero to one thousand three hundred dollars, and it can last for five years. Understood. Okay. Yeah. Um, and all of these prices are from Planned Parenthood. So. Got it. 
I, I, I know it can be kind of difficult when considering um, a birth control method, which one to use, especially if you're on a budget. And especially, like, remember, these are hormonal methods, so they might not work the same for, for people because you might have different reactions to the hormones and they might cause side effects. Like, for example, um, tender breasts is one big side effect of, of birth control uh, because your body, again, thinks it's pregnant, so your breasts will um, be a little more tender. Um, weight gain uh, because you're trying to retain fat is another um, side effect. Mood swings, um, maybe like depressive thoughts. So these are all side effects of birth control, hormonal birth control. And just um, keep in mind that it's different for different people. And if you have questions, you should ask a healthcare provider or um, a, a trusted, like a trusted medical professional. That sounds like great advice. Um, thank, thank you. you so much. I learned a lot. No uh, anything yeah. else to like, yeah, anything else to add to hormonal or should we move on the barrier? Um, yeah, I didn't have anything else to add to hormonal. Um, just it's like a preference based thing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So now um, we're going to move on to uh, barrier methods. Actually. Okay. So we're going to move on to like a flex like a flex um, hormonal barrier method. It's called the Nuva Ring. Has yes. Heard? Yeah, have you heard of that? Yeah. I sure yeah. have. <laughs> okay. No, I just, I know what it is. <laughs> okay, yeah. So the Nuva Ring um, works well if you, if you use it consistently. And it also contains hormones, but it's like a little flexible ring um, that you, you just kind of stick into your, your vagina. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, and you absorb the hormones into your body through your vaginal lining, um, and it stops o ovulation. Um, so, so it's like kind of a flex thing because you can just put it into your, your body, um, like directly into your, your reproductive system. Whereas like the pill, the shot, um, the implant, all those, the patch, like they go on top of onto other things in your on other body parts, but the ring goes right into you. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, and so it costs zero to two hundred dollars, and you replace it monthly. Cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So now it's time for barrier methods, uh, which are pretty easy to understand. Um, so the first and most common one. Do you know what this is, Katie? I'm gonna say condom. Yes, they are. Yes. Yeah. So condoms are are pretty effective. Um, they're 85 percent effective, which is like a, a B plus. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah. Um, so they're external condoms that you wear on on the penis. Um, during intercourse. And so condoms are um, the one form of birth control. Well, there's a few, but condoms are one of the few forms of birth control that help protect against STDs. Um, and, and like other birth controls, like the pill, the patch, the implant, don't protect against STDs, but, but condoms do. So it's important to uh, engage in what's called dual method use. So mm -hmm. as you may notice, um, condoms are only 85% effective in preventing pregnancy, but um, they are very effective in pre preventing STDs. So it, it's important to double up on the methods, right? So like maybe use birth control and a condom for, for the um, protection of pregnancy and protection against STDs, sure. right? Yeah, so dual method use is pretty important, and a lot of people have misconceptions about it. So I remember um, someone once asked me, oh, dual method, that means using two condoms. That's actually a bad idea. No, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, because if you use two condoms, the friction of them rubbing against each other will cause them to break. Um, and then you're at an increased risk of pregnancy and STDs. Um, so, so dual method is not using two things, um, or like taking two pills or something like that. It's one method for, for one partner, one method for another partner, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's to make sure everyone is well covered. So yeah, um, condoms are very cheap. Uh, they can like, they're like $2 max. One time, though, I saw, like, a really fancy lambskin condom for $7 a condom. Where was, I was this? Like, what? 
It was at like Walgreens. What? <laughs> yeah, right. Like it was like this really expensive like lambskin natural condom, and I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> what kind of bougie Walgreens were you at where they had like lambskin condoms? It was, it was on my. Uh, it was in Chicago. Oh, okay. I guess that yeah. makes a bit more sense. <laughs> yeah, but I was just like, you're having some expensive sex, like at seven dollars a condom. I was like, oh my gosh. Wow. And they they had like seven condoms in the pack, so it was like fifty dollars. What? <laughs> I know. Okay, that seems anyway. excessive. Anyway. I know. Anyway. Um so a second type of condom is called the internal condom. Yes. Um, otherwise known as a female condom, but it goes inside um the body. Um and internal condoms also reduce the risk of STDs and STIs. So they're basically like actual condoms, except um, you put them inside the vagina. Um, they can be kind of large, um, and they can they can be in the vagina for about eight hours before before or yeah before sex. Um, and they make a lot of noise, but uh, yeah, they can be pretty effective. Um, and so yeah, so that's it's basically like the the extra condom, except inside <laughs> wow yeah and so they have a they have actually a lower effectiveness rate it's like 79 percent effective um but do not use both an internal and an external condom the friction will not <laughs> like the, they they'll just rub up against each other and break so um it's best to use like a barrier hormonal method and an, a condom method yeah. Good content. And they can be a little more expensive. So they can be like five dollars, um, three dollars. So it can be a little more expensive than than just uh external condoms. Excellent. Yeah. So there's some more um barrier methods. Um so the diaphragm is kind of an older one. Um and this is one this is one they use every time. So it's 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 called a cervical cap. Um, and what it is, is like, you just kind of bend it in half and insert it into the vagina and it covers the cervix. Um, and so it's a, since it's a barrier that covers the cervix, um, sperm can't really swim through it and come up to fertilize. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, diaphragms have been around for a while, um, and they're 88% effective. They can be kind of expensive though. Um, so the price range is from zero to seventy five dollars, which is a little much. Ooh. Uh, but I'm sure that's like a really bougie diaphragm. Yeah, yeah. that must be like a really, really bougie diet, like a lambskin diaphragm or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. anything with lambskin, I swear it's so bougie. Okay. So so there's also the birth control sponge, um, which ranges in effectiveness. So um it's a small round sponge made from plastic and you put it into your vagina before sex. Yeah, so it covers your cervix, and um, it has spermicide built into it um, to help um, prevent pregnancy. And so it just it fits snugly against the cervix. It blocks the entrance to the uterus, um, and, and it just prevents pregnancy basically by being a barrier method. So I want to clarify. So a lot of birth control methods prevent pregnancy by preventing the option, like the opportunity for fertilization, Um because there, there's no egg that's being ovulated that can be fertilized. A lot of barrier methods um, prevent pregnancy by being um, literally a barrier, you know, to pregnancy. Yeah, sounds about right. Great. Um, so the cervical cap um, is similar to a diaphragm, um, and it, it covers the cervix, um, but the cervical cap... Um, uh, is, is a lot smaller than a diaphragm. So, so like, the diaphragm is shaped kind of like a, a dish. It's large. Um, but cervical caps are shaped kind of like a little hat. So they're both um, barrier methods, but they, they're, like, shaped differently. And then lastly is spermicide. So spermicide can be um, combined with a diaphragm and a cap. So you can put, like, spermicide in the cap and in the diaphragm. And so what it does basically is, is it kills sperm. Um, to stop it from from reaching an egg, and it can increase the effectiveness of the diaphragm and the cap if you use spermicide. Interesting. Yeah. So these barrier methods have pretty low effectiveness rates. Uh, eighty eight for the diaphragm, seventy six to eighty eight for the birth control sponge, seventy one to eighty six for the cap, and uh, the spermicide is seventy one percent effective. But um, the pat, like the the birth control method method, so like the shot has a ninety four percent effective rate. Um, 
the the implant has a 99 percent the ring is 91 um birth control patch also 91 the pill is also 91 so by preventing the opportunity to get pregnant it's a lot more effective than you know like having just the barrier method as your only method of sure yeah so i'm sorry i missed one like crucial uh barrier hormonal hybrid uh, and that's called an iud Mm mm-hmm yeah. So yep. what do you know about IUDs, Katie? Honestly, not much. Um, <laughs> I know that they can stay inside you for up to 10 years. Um, mm-hmm. It stands for intrauterine device. So as the name suggests, it resides in the uterus. Um, mm-hmm. And is this also one that prevents ovulation? Uh, sometimes, sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Please explain to me. Yeah. So IUDs are like a very interesting hormonal uh, barrier hybrid method. So it's basically a little tiny device that you stick inside your uterus. Um, the insertion can be kind of painful um, and, you know, they can be kind of difficult to maintain. Um, and they're also a little expensive, but they're very low maintenance. So you just put it in and, and it's basically like a set it and forget it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so there's two different types, right? So copper IUDs, um, and the most popular one is called the Paragard right. and hormonal IUDs. Um, and there's four of those. So the Marina, the Kylina, the Liletta, and the Skyla. You've probably seen like commercials for these. Um, I have. Yeah. I love the Kylina, uh, commercials where like the woman is like really, really concerned. And then she like, is like, Oh, I have the Kylina. And then like her face just relaxes. Have you seen yeah, those? I have seen yeah. that one. They're so funny to me. I'm just like, ha, 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 ha. When you turn in an assignment that you forgot, you turned in. <laughs> You're like, oh, thank God. Everything's yeah. fine. You're like, oh, thank God. Yeah, like everything's fine. <laughs> yeah. So um, the Paragard, which is the copper uh, IUD, is it doesn't have any hormones. Um, and, and so it's, all it is is wrapped in copper, which um, uh, alters the way that sperm cells move. So it basically makes it a lot harder for them to move. Copper does. Um, and it prevents you from pregnancy for up to 12 years. Um, and it's non-hormonal. Um, so, yeah. So the sperm doesn't like the copper uh, at all. And it really, like, screws with them. Um, so it makes it almost impossible for the sperm to get to the egg. Got it. And then the Marina, the Kylina, the Liletta, the Skyla. These are hormones that use, um, these are, sorry, IUDs that use the hormone progestin mm-hmm. um, that, that uh, we've seen in all sorts of different um, birth control methods up until now. And they use that to prevent pregnancy. Um, and you absorb it through your, your uterus. So the Marina works for seven years, Kylina for five, the Liletta for seven years, and the Skyla for three years. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, so, Got it. Yeah. Yeah, so um, so the hormonal birth con- the hormonal IUDs will thicken the mucus um, and and stop ovulation. Um, no eggs, no pregnancy. You know. Yeah, that makes um, sense. Yeah, and the Paragard um, is kind of like um, it's kind of like a, a a barrier method, except it has a little bit of um, chemistry inbuilt into it because copper. Um, let me see, it's copper basic, copper pH. I don't know. Um, probably not. No, no it's, it's pretty. No, it's okay. It's pretty. It's like 5.5. Um, oh, okay. That's slightly acidic. Wait, no, it's not. I wonder what copper is. What's, what's the pH of copper? Oh, it's 6.5, which is slightly basic. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, that's no, slightly no, acidic. That's slightly acidic. My bad. My bad. <laughs> so you were not in chemistry anymore. Yeah, no, it depends. It depends. There's not really a, a solid, I'm not really finding like a solid, like, I see this one experiment that has like a bunch of different pHs for copper, but basically, uh, sperm doesn't like it. I want to know why, though. Um, let me see. I'll just go to Google and figure it out. Yeah. Real-time oh, yeah. learning. Okay, copper ions um, apparently really influence the the movement of of sperm's uh, motility, which is how, how it moves. Um, and it, it does this, but so copper ions actually detach the sperm head. from its Whoa. Head. Okay. Yeah. So it literally cannot move. Yeah. So it literally just like yeets the head off <laughs> and we're like, well, one and done. It's probably more of a degradation process. Uh, but yes, I feel like yeet is a bit of a strong bird. <laughs> 
uh, you know, it's it's an yeah. all purpose word. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, so so there we go. Um they they just detach the head from the tail. So it seriously impacts the mobility of the sperm. Um and it's very effective. Um if you get it put in within twenty within five days after unprotected sex, mm-hmm. it's more than ninety nine point nine percent effective. Whoa, um, that's so to, cool. Yeah, to prevent pregnancy after sex. Man, okay. okay. That yeah. I did not know. That's really cool. Yeah, and it lasts forever, um, like twelve years. Like that's that's enough years for me to like literally from now go through med school and residency and become an actual doctor. <laughs> yeah, you could have yeah. the same like intrauterine device yeah. all through that's that cool. period of time. The whole time, right? Yeah. You know how toenail polish lasts forever? Yes. <laughs> the IUD. The IUD. Okay. Uh, the IUD is the toenail polish of birth control. <laughs> I need that on a t-shirt. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, those were all of the hormonal and barrier methods. Um, and there's a few more flexible methods um, called lifestyle methods. Mm-hmm. So there's fertility awareness that's practiced by people who may not be comfortable using birth control. And I want to be clear really quickly. So all these types of birth control that we've talked about um, are just contraceptives, which means they prevent pregnancy. They are not abortifacants, which right. means they cause abortion. So an abortifacant um, is used when an embryo is actually uh, or a zygote, a blastula, like a group of cells is actually, has been actually fertilized and has been implanted um, in in the body. Even Plan B, um, the morning after the morning after pill, is not an uh, abortifacant, um, and and it's it's just uh, it acts it stops by preventing the release of the egg from the ovary, right? Right. It doesn't, it doesn't actually, it's like a super dose of birth control. Um, it doesn't actually um, cause uh, an abortion. Um, so all of these birth control methods are just contraceptives. They either prevent the sperm from reaching the egg or um, prevent the egg from even being released. They're not abortifacants. And, and by clarifying that fact, we can make it a little less scary um, for people who might have, have some misconceptions. I think that's yeah. really important to know. Uh, yeah. yeah um, absolutely. Yeah, so now for some lifestyle changes. Um, waking up early and eating healthy. Just kidding. Those aren't going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so so we have fertility awareness, um, which basically so there are some days um, where literally you cannot get pregnant, um, which it's like it's like like there's no egg that's currently being ovulated or there's no egg that's about to be ovulated. So an egg can only last in a fallopian tube for about 24 hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, sperm, like the lifetime of literally even the most longest lived sperm. And these sperm are crazy. They're called lunatic fringe sperm. Um, and these are like the super, super long lived ones. Um, they can last for 72 days in the vaginal environment. Most, most sperm die within minutes. Um, they're very weak. Um, and, uh, the vagina is very strong. <laughs> like, Wait, did you say uh, 72 days or 72 hours? 72 hours. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. 72 hours. They can only last for three days. Mild um, concern. Yeah, most sperm die very quickly. Um, but so, the, so these lunatic sperm can last for about three days and the egg is only in the ovary for about 24 hours. So, so there's only really like a 24 hour window of fertilization. Um, so fertility awareness is 76 to 88% effective. And so what it is, is there's just some days where you straight up cannot get pregnant. Like the egg hasn't been ovulated and it won't be ovulated for three days. Um, and, and there's nothing to fertilize in the, in your, your uterus, right? In your fallopian tubes. Right. So if you have, um, unprotected sex that day, which you shouldn't because STDs, um, or you can, you know, it's your choice, your body, um, then, then your pregnancy risk is, is fairly low because there's nothing to fertilize just naturally. That makes sense. And so then they have the, the pull-out method. Um, it is free, zero dollars. Um, and <laughs> it, uh, it works. It's, it's only 78% effective though. So literally this has been around since sex was invented, like since the beginning of time. So it's where you pull out right before ejaculation. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There isn't much more to it, but it's not effect. It's not like 
super effective. I actually think it has the lowest effective la- the lowest effectiveness rate um, of of most birth controls. <laughs> like it just it just does. Like yeah, um, and also like definitely doesn't protect against STDs or STIs. Yeah, it doesn't protect against STDs, and also like pre cum, so pre ejaculate, yes. has sperm in it. Um, which can lead to, to pregnancy. So I just, why, bro? <laughs> just, m- maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, um, breastfeeding is also another way of birth control. Um, your body just, like, stops. For, it, this is just natural. Your body just, like, doesn't ovulate um, when you, you are, you're breastfeeding. And this is called uh, lactational amenorrhea. Mm-hmm. Which means so amenorrhea is is when you don't have a period, and right. lactational means during birth during breastfeeding, right? Right. So um, if you nurse at least four hours during the day and at least six hours at night and feed your baby only breast milk, your body just naturally starts stops ovulating. And uh, this is an evolutionary mechanism. It's because if you're already breastfeeding a baby and um, you're still like you're already breastfeeding your baby, your body knows that, you know, you already have a young to take care of and it right. does not want to get pregnant again because pregnancy is very energy, like it's very taxing on the body. Um, and it also like kind of sucks sometimes. Um, yeah, it sounds like <laughs> it. Yeah, you know, so so pregnant people, this is a misconception, pregnant people aren't eating for two. Um, they only need about 400, 200 to 400 more calories per day. Um, but anyway, um, so you're, it's, it's more energetically taxing to get pregnant and especially even more taxing if you already have a baby, um, that you're feeding, you know? Mm-hmm. So your body just naturally just stops ovulating, um, when you're, you're, uh, breastfeeding and it can be as effective as contraceptives like the pill or the patch. Um, and only it's like about two out of a hundred people can get pregnant in, in the six months um, after a baby is born, if you're breastfeeding. So the breastfeeding method really only works for six months um, to give your body enough time to recover. Uh, that's kind of the evolutionary time frame. Um, but it is really effective. And if you nurse for four hours a day, six hours a night, um, your body's ovulation um, is, is very unlikely. So, yeah. Maybe don't, like, get pregnant just... For yeah, birth control. Yes, yes, exactly. Maybe, Maybe don't get pregnant just so you can like, breastfeed and Yeah, there are yeah. easier ways. <laughs> there are easier ways. So it's 98% effective, but, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm picking up what you're putting down. Like, yeah, you know, maybe yeah. invest in a condom. doesn't have to be a landscape condom. Yeah, just, like, top over. Also, this doesn't protect from STDs also, so. No, that's important to know. <laughs> it's not, like, a yeah. magical catch-all that just, like, expels all sperm from the body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways. Um, so the 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 last form of lifestyle birth control um, is abstinence and outer course. So I want to be clear: abstinence is um, an effective form of birth control. Um, it, it is like I I say abstinent. Like I'm someone who is celibate. Um, Me too. Yeah, by choice also. <laughs> right. I'm going to have to clarify that. But it is my choice, right? That's what feminism is all about. Absolutely. Um, it's my choice to stay absent. It's my choice to to um, encourage others to, to do what they want to do, you know? Right. Um, and so, so absence is effective. It's actually 100% effective because you're literally not being pregnant. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's, like, no chance. Yeah, there's um, no opportunity. There's no opportunity. But it, it is, like, hard to do. It's not, like, the best, like, form of, like, you can't, like, teach kids to, like, stay absent, you know? No, abstinence-only yeah. sex education just doesn't work, like, by any yeah. public health yeah. metric. Yeah, it's very poor. It's like, bad, bad, y'all. Decisions. Yeah. <laughs> so another form of birth control that I personally, like, enjoy talking about is called outer course. Mm-hmm. Um, people don't really um, talk about this a lot because it seems like something, like, teenagers would do. And it is true, it's something teenagers would do. But Outer course is basically like not having um, penetrative intercourse, right? Right. So like things that we generally consider in our heteronormative patriarchal society to be sex. So like, sure. like, like literally like insertion. Um, it's like, you know, um, kissing, like massaging, masturbation, um, dry humping, you know, mm-hmm. and just like talking to each other, which like kind can sound lame, um, but it's, it's effective. Um and 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 oral sex and anal sex um, both uh, 
can't lead to pregnancy, but you should use a condom or a dental dam during oral sex or a condom during anal sex because they can lead to STDs. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, abstinence, so just not having sex um, is an effective way to not get pregnant. Um, and, and outer course, so, like, not having, you know, insertion sex, but, like, um, this, these can usually fall into the category of foreplay. Um, that can be, that's very effective at, at not getting pregnant because, um, there's like no chance for sperm and egg to meet. Right. Yeah. Um, so then the last two permanent methods of birth control are sterilization mm-hmm. for people with, um, fallopian tubes. Um, which is also called a tubal ligation, otherwise known as getting your tubes tied. Right. Um, yeah, so it, it literally just um, blocks your fallopian tubes. Yeah, right? Yeah, so, yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, so if an egg is, is ovulated, sperm can't get to it and, and cause pregnancy. Right. Um, and, and you still will get your... So, okay, so this is this is interesting. You still... This was interesting to me because I remember somebody I knew was like, oh, yeah, I got my tube packed, but she was still having her period. Um, huh. and, and I was just like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, this shouldn't be possible. Like, excuse me? Um... But so I was just young and, and dumb, but you actually can get your period after you get your tubes tied. Right. Um, what people refer to as not having their periods is called hy- a hysterectomy, which is where the entire like uterus is removed and mm-hmm. it can lead to all sorts of problems um, and, and benefits for people who need them. Um, but so, so when an egg is released, um, it kind of has nowhere to go. Um, so... So, so yeah, it, like it doesn't move through your fallopian tubes. Sperm can't get to an egg. Um, and from what I know, the egg just gets absorbed back into the body. Hmm. Um, and so, so you you will still get your period because a period is a hormonally regulated thing, right? So your body will still be like, oh, I'm ovulating an egg, and still like progesterone will still come through and like estrogen to stick in your uterine lining, and then. Mm-hmm. It'll disintegrate again. So it'll just do all the normal things of having a period. You just, like, won't have an egg there, you know? Sure. That makes sense. Yeah, right? So ovulation is not, like, an egg in the uterus is not necessary for a period to occur. Yeah? Right. So that was really interesting to me. So uh, having a tubal ligation does not mean that you won't get your period. Yeah. Yeah, that's really um, important to know. Yeah, that is really important to know. It's really interesting. Um, so, yeah, it, it's permanent. Um, most most tubal ligations are permanent. There was one tubal ligation method a while ago that's, like, kind of older. Um, I forget the name of it, um, but it's in my fallopian tubes episode, which you should watch. Um, yes, you should. And, and, <laughs> um, and, and it, it, is re- it is reversible, but it was, like, crazy ineffective at preventing pregnancy. It had, like, a 60% failure rate or something. Um, oh, wow. 60% success rate. But I guess at that point, it is a failure rate. Like, you are failing. Um, so it, it was like, yeah, so, so people don't use that anymore. Um, right now, just the most popular kind is, is of, of ligation is from Japan. I think it's called the Onichiwa Oka O something method. I totally forget the name. Um, but it's really just where you get your, your tubes just completely ligated. Um, and it is permanent. Um, most of the time, so it can be kind of a tough decision to make, um, but it lasts for life and it's very effective at not getting you pregnant. So the last type of birth control is a vasectomy, Mm -hmm. um, otherwise known as male sterilization. So a vasectomy is just a simple surgery. Um, it's, it's really, it's done to the small tubes in the scrotum that carry sperm. So sperm cannot leave your body. So the, the the, the tubes in the scrotum are cut or blocked off. So sperm can't leave your body. And it's almost 100% effective at um, creating, at, 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 you know, reducing um, pregnancy risk. So there's two types of methods, um, incision, which is cutting, and the no-cut method. Um, so, it, so methods that don't involve incision lower the risk of infection, um, and they generally take time, like more time to heal because they're just blocking um, the seminal. So it's called the seminal vesicle, um, the tube that carries sperm from the testicle through the bladder, the prostate to the urethra um, to, to be ejaculated. 
So, <laughs> right. So, so since the central <clears throat> is blocked, um, the other tubes are not blocked. So, so right out of the seminal vesicle, the sperm will go into what's called the vas deferens, mm-hmm. um, which is just that very large tube that, that goes through the bladder, through the, the prostate, um, and, and comes out through the, the urethra um, in the, the penis. Um, and so the vas deferens will still carry semen, um, which is, you know, a mix of, of different milky secretions. This is actually what I heard it described as, like, in a textbook. Milky secretion. Wow. Um, right? From, Descriptive. Um, I know, right? Like, from the body. So they basically mean, like, um, prostate fluids, like, um, just some lubricants that, mm-hmm. yeah, that sperm picks up along the way. Um, and so semen can still leave the body. So you can still ejaculate. Um, it just, there won't be any sperm in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Did so you know? the sperm cells just stay in your body and are absorbed just just in they they just stay in your testicles and just are absorbed back um into into your body and it's not so about three months after a vasectomy your semen just won't contain any sperm wow yeah so it's not like like usually it's not like immediate you know right yeah yeah but three months still yeah that's it, not just, that long yeah it's not that long so so it'll still like look feel, maybe even taste the same after a vasectomy. You just won't be able to get anyone pregnant. Sure. Yeah. Good to know. Um, yeah, so that's the last form of birth control. And vasectomies sometimes are, are reversible. So unlike tubal ligations, they can sometimes be re- reversible. Yeah, or um, self-reversible. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so it lasts for life. Um, and it's actually a lot cheaper than a tubal ligation. So vasectomies um, are about $1,000 maximum. Tubal mm-hmm. ligations can be six thousand dollars. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I know, right? Discrimination. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, yeah. But really. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, that was all uh, eighteen methods of birth control. <laughs> Thank you, Vice uh, Look at you just throwing yeah, no down. Problem. Our our sources for this episode are from the Planned Parenthood um, birth control website. Mm-hmm. Um, they're very very effective. Um, super easy website. Super great to choose what's what's most effective for you. Um, and you know, just to be clear, like no form of birth control is an ab- abortifacient. So nothing in birth control actually destroys um, or or removes. Or, terminates, I guess, um, a fertilized embryo. The whole point of birth control is to prevent a fertilized embryo from developing. Yes. Yeah. So, so we've gone through hormonal methods, um, which are, you know, the patch. The, actually, Katie, why don't you recite these to me? What are some hormonal methods that we've done over? Oh, is this a test? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> All right, I'm excited. All right, so we went over the pill, the implant, the patch, um, we okay. went over, hang on, <laughs> the shot. Um, what else did we go over? We went over IUD, which is sort of a mixed barrier hormonal method. Mm-hmm. Um, oh gosh. What else did we go over? The ring. Yes, we went over the ring, the Nuva ring. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anything else that we missed? No, I think that's good. I think that's it for hormonal. Yeah, and then some barrier methods like? Like external condoms, internal condoms. Yeah. Um, Dental dams. We went over, well, that's not really pregnancy. That's more STIs. Yeah. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, the uh, cervical cap mm-hmm. um, slash diaphragm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else did we go over? I think I may have forgotten some. What are the other ones we went over? Oh, no. No, it's okay. So it's um, the condoms, two condoms, diaphragm, the sponge. The sponge. I always forget yeah, the sponge. Yeah, the cap. And uh, spermicide. Spermicide. Okay, yes. Yeah. It's kind of a and chemical then, barrier method. Yeah. And then there are a few for, um, like, uh, lifestyle methods, like fertility awareness. Um, anything else? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we talked a bit about uh, abstinence and yeah. outer course as yeah. ways of preventing pregnancy. Um, those are more big lifestyle decisions. Um, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, what else did we go over? Um, uh, the pull-out method. The pull out, well, yeah, the pull-out method. I'm not a fan of that one. Yeah, it is definitively ineffective. It is, if you watch the gyno wrap. 
Hashtag check out our, our rap video. <laughs> yes, please do. Um, yes. Did we go over anything else? I think that was it. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Oh, well, breastfeeding, I guess. Breastfeeding. Yeah. Breastfeeding. Um, and then as so, far as semi-permanent to permanent methods, um, mm-hmm. tubal ligation and vasectomy. Yeah, there we go. Yay, gold star. Yeah, and, and, and also there are so many more birth control methods that are holistic that we haven't covered, right? Yes, so absolutely. Like, yeah, so there's like, you know, foods that you can eat that, you know, can slow down ovulation. People have been using these types of rudimentary birth control methods for years. Um, it's just nowadays we have access to a lot of technology um, that can help us be more effective and conscientious in our choices. But ultimately, that is what birth control is. It's a choice, um, and it's your choice. Um, and people should have the ability to make the choices that they want about their sexual lives and how to deal with things that happen before or after intercourse. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, 100% thanks so much for, for having me on the podcast. This Wait, no, it's podcast. our shared podcast. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, thanks so much for giving me the opportunity, I guess, to podcast well thank you so much for talking about birth control in such depth and which is eloquent thank you (laughs) it's a great podcast with katie (laughs) yay um all right thank you everyone for tuning in to this week's vagcast please join us next week for a topic we haven't decided on yet but we'll talk about afterwards um it'll be a fun topic no matter what we choose it's always a fun topic yeah all right see you guys next week See you next week. Hashtag badge out. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to end this. Okay. Okay, bye.